In this demonstration, we're going to have a look at how we configure a web application proxy. Web application proxy would normally be sitting in our DMZ or perimeter network, and what we would do is we will publish whatever website it is that we have sitting on our internal network to external users. The advantage of doing this is it gives us a level of security, as users, worst possible case, would possibly crash the web application proxy. So in order for this to work correctly, the first thing we have to do is one of the requirements is Active Directory Federation Services. So I've come to my Active Directory Domain Controller, and what we're going to do on the Domain Controller is we're going to come in here and we're just going to add roles and features. And the roles and features we're going to add is we're going to add the Active Directory Federation Services. So on the, before we begin, we've selected Next. On the installation type, we're going to go for role-based or feature-based installation. Service selection will be LON-DC1. Server roles at this point here will be Active Directory Federation Services. And select our Next button. Won't install any additional features. And select Next. Have a quick read through the summary page. We're happy with that, so we'll select Next. On the confirmation page, what we'll do is we will select Install. This is now going to install the Active Directory Federation services. It's just going to take a couple of minutes. So at this point here, we'll just pause the presentation and return back once the installation is complete. The installation is now complete, so we can select the Close button. And then what we need to do is we need to configure Active Directory Federation services. So we'll click on the exclamation mark and configure our federation services on this server. What we're going to do, this is our first server. So we're going to create the first federation server in the federation server form and select next. We're going to connect through to Active Directory by just using our administrator account, current user, and select next. Then what we need to do is just need to specify three settings. So we'll just specify those settings. Now what we've done is specified the SSL certificate that we're going to use, the federation service name, we're just going to use the server name, and then the federation service display name, we're going to put in a datum corporation, and select next. Then for our service account, we're just going to use our Active Directory Administrator account, so we're using existing domain account, and we'll just go for Administrator. Then we need to specify the password. Then we select the next button. We're going to create a new database using Windows internal database and select next. This will then take us through to review options. Happy with the options that are in place, so we'll select our next button. It's now going to do a prerequisite check that will pass fairly quickly. We should get a couple of bits of information here. So as it says up the top here, we can now begin to install Active Directory Federation Services. And we'll do that by just selecting the Configure button. This will just take a few minutes just for us to install the Active Directory Federated Services. So we'll pause the presentation and return back once the installation is complete. So as you can see, the server was successfully configured. Let's look at the warnings. So we will have to do a restart. The SSL certificate subject names do not support host name. That doesn't really matter. That's because we've used the same name for the certificate and also the server. If we do, we're doing this correctly, these two error messages here, so where we didn't use the server name, wouldn't show up. Uh, we failed to register the SSL bindings. Again, not too much of an issue. These are warnings, they're not errors, but the important one really is we have to do a machine restart. So we'll select close, and what we'll do is we'll reboot the Active Directory Domain Controller and return back once the reboot is complete. Domain Controller is now booted, so the next thing we need to do is we now need to configure our web application proxy server. So we'll move across to that server, now on the web application proxy server, first thing we have to do is we just have to configure a certificate on the WAP server. So I've come into the Microsoft Management Console, I've gone for local computers, so computer certificates, come to personal, right click, and what we'll do at this point here is go to all tasks and we'll request a new certificate. Read through the before you begin and select next. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go configured by your administrator, so we're going to go for the Active Directory Enrollment Policy and select next. That will bring us into another configuration page. So on the next configuration page, we're going to go for an Active Directory uh, a Date and Web policy. So we'll turn on the tick. We do have to put some information into the certificate, so we'll go for the more information required. In the case of subject name, we're going to go for full DN, and we just need to fill out the value for the full DN. And what we're doing with this full distinguished name, we're going to use cn equals lon dcondatemcom and select Add. Then we need to fill out some alternate name information, so we're going to go for DNS. And the first thing we're going to do is put in the value of the domain controller, which is lon dc onedatemcom Then we're going to add in a second value for the mail server. And this is the value we're going to use for users connecting through to OWA, so we'll add that in as well. 
Now we've added all that information in, we just need to select our OK button. Enroll, and that will now enroll our certificate. Certificate's now enrolled, so we can select Finish. We just need to make one modification to the certificate and put in a friendly name for the certificate. So we'll just right click on the certificate and go to Properties. And in the case of the friendly name, we're going to call this WAP Certificate. Now we've got the friendly name in place, we just need to select OK. And then the next thing we need to do is we just actually need to install the WAP service. So we're just going to click on the Start button and go to Server Manager. And once this loads up, the next thing to do is just add some roles and features to the server. So at this point here, now what we're going to do is add roles and features. That's going to bring us into the wizard to add roles and features. So we'll go next on them before you begin. Installation type will be role based or feature based. Server selection will be this server, LonServe1. In the case of the server roles, what we're going to do is come down to our remote settings and we're going to add in the remote role. So on the list, we'll just go for remote access. And then what we'll do is select the next button. In case of the features, we won't add in additional features. Read through the summary page, select next. We'll go for web application proxy. Add in the additional utilities for managing web application proxy and select next. Happy with everything on the confirmation page. So we'll select install. And then what we'll do is we'll allow this to install. So we'll pause the presentation and return back once the installation is complete. Now the role's installed, we'll just select close. Next thing we need to do is we just need to come in and we just need to actually configure it. So if we just come back to server manager, we'll just pop on our notification and we'll open the application proxy wizard. Then all we need to do is fill out a little bit of information. So we'll select next. Federation server name, so this will be our lon-dc1.adatum.com and we need to specify the username and password. So now we've filled out Federation server name, username and password, we'll just select the next button. Then next thing to do is select the certificate, so we'll go for our lon-dc1.adatum.com and select next. Read through confirmation and click configure. And at this point here, it's now going to configure ADFS proxy based off the PowerShell command that we saw on the confirmation page. So as we can see, web application proxy was configured successfully, so we'll select our close button. And what we'll now do is it'll launch up the remote access management console. And what we now need to do is we now need to create an application for our Outlook on the web. What we do is we click on the publish button. That brings us into wizard, so we'll select next on the welcome page. In the case of our pre-authentication, we're just going to use pass-through. So we'll do no pre-authentication from the web application proxy server and select next. On the publishing settings, we just need to fill out three bits of information. So we're going to call this Outlook on the web. External URL will be https colon forward slash forward slash mail.adatum.com forward slash ow8 forward slash and this is required. And then backend server https colon forward slash forward slash lon hyphen ex onecom forward slash ow8 forward slash and again this is required. Last bit of information is we just need to specify our certificate. So all we'll do is we'll click on the drop down and we'll go for our lon hyphen dc onecom certificate. Select the next button. Read through the confirmation. That's the PowerShell script that's going to run. So we'll select publish and that will now go away and publish our web application. As you can see, it's published successfully. So we'll select the close button. Now we've done all of that. Last thing to do is just verify that this works correctly. So we're just going to jump across the domain controller to create a DNS record for mail.adatum.com. So now our DNS server, we're just going to come to our forward lookup zones. We're just going to go for a datum.com. We'll right click at this point here. We'll create a new host record. I'm going to call this mail, mail.adatum.com. And the IP address we're going to use will be 172.16.0. On this point here, 12. We'll add that as a host. Click OK. We're done there now, so we'll just minimize this down. So if we just jump back to the web application proxy server, uh, what we can see at this point here, we can see that, if we just escape out of this, we can actually see that we have got this set up as 172.16.0.12. I've got 172.16.0.12. 
We'll now just test to make sure that web application proxy server works, so we'll move back to one of the other machines and we'll just access OWA. So what we're going to do, just on this machine here, we'll just launch up Internet Explorer and then what we'll do is we'll just put in the URL so https colon forward slash forward slash mail dot datum dot com forward slash OWA hit the return key and what it should now do is it'll hit the 172.16.0.12 or lon serve one what it will then do is the web application proxy server based off the publishing rule we put in place will take us to the AWA login page and that's the end of this demonstration thank you